Coming up, if this doesn't give you the creeps, this will. We'll take a socially distanced peek into a haunted house at the Curtis Mansion and see how they're adapting to COVID-19. Plus, Halloween treats might be tasty, but aren't always healthy. Lucky for you, these are healthier than most. Morgan and I break down a proper push-up and recommendations on staying pandemic safe this Halloween from the CDC. All of that and more today on SoFlo Health. You know, there's just something about music boxes that make everything creepier than necessary. Well, it probably helps that we're inside of No Way Out Haunt at the Curtis Mansion in Miami Springs. Welcome to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. This is my good friend, Freddie. He's not doing so well. And COVID is a big problem for all of us. Well, maybe except for Freddie here. But we want to make sure that you feel safe, not just in a haunted house like today, which we'll talk to Ozzy later on to find out more about this, but we want you to feel safe during Halloween in general when it comes to COVID. So listen up. Halloween is easy for us SoFlo health types because candy is evil and you should never eat it. Of course not. The holidays are here for us to enjoy. That's why we stay healthy year round. However, the coronavirus pandemic does pose some interesting challenges for us to navigate this Halloween season. Fear not, the CDC has some tricks you'll want even more than the treats when it comes to staying safe this Halloween. Obviously, trick-or-treating poses an elevated risk of COVID-19 spread, but if you do decide to participate, here's what the CDC recommends. Avoid direct contact with trick-or-treaters. Give out treats outdoors if possible. Set up a station with individually bagged treats for kids to take. Wash hands before handling treats and wear a mask. When it comes to wearing a mask, the CDC recommends decorating it and making it a part of your costume as you'll see later on in the show at No Way Out Haunt. Although a costume mask is not a substitute for a cloth mask, do not wear a cloth mask under a costume mask. It may become difficult to breathe. Masks should also not be worn by anyone under the age of two or that has difficulty breathing. Continue to social distance, wash your hands, and use hand sanitizer. And the CDC recommends that you supervise young children using hand sanitizer. Besides trick-or-treating, the CDC recommends enjoying other outdoor activities, such as going for a walk and enjoying the Halloween decorations in your neighborhood, or carving pumpkins outdoors with your family or neighbors and organizing other activities outdoors such as a scavenger hunt. You could visit local orchards, nurseries, or pumpkin patches. The common theme here is to do what you know to keep yourself and others safe as well as being outside when you have the option. Although this pandemic is certainly scarier than any haunted house or costume out there, it shouldn't stop you from enjoying this spooky season safely. Ah! Oh my God, I'm not even in the scary part of the Curtis Mansion just yet here at No Way Out Haunt. And let me tell you, it's getting spooky as we walk through here. And if you're concerned about COVID, we're going to talk to Ozzy later. He's gonna lay it all down for you and tell you how they're taking good care of you and scaring you along the way, but not scaring you with COVID, just scaring you with scary stuff like this. Now, before we do that, we have to make some Halloween sweet treats that are actually pretty healthy. So I'm gonna head this way and you watch this. Oh boy. It's spooky season and today we're joined by Constellation Culinary Group and also joined by Chef Najee Mercedes who told me, just call me Najee, so I will. Najee, <laughs> what are we making today? Um, today we're making three easy fun treats that you can make at home. We're gonna start off with our ghosts made out of meringues, okay. which is just egg whites and sugar. Right, so people of our show might be thinking, well, sugar, how does that go along with so full of health? Well, we'd rather you eat something you know the ingredients are in. So here we're gonna be making a something like a marshmallow-like object, whereas a lot of marshmallows out there have tons and tons of additives. And as you just saw, we've got two ingredients. Yes, exactly. Right. And maybe just a little bit of food coloring. Perfect. Sure. So I already have some meringue mix already made. And then I just have a plain round tip and it's all in whatever shape you want. So you see, they're just like little creepy fun yeah. Hershey kiss kind of um, ghosts. And then is this something you have to cook? 
Yes, so you do have to keep these in the oven um, overnight or around six hours to completely dehydrate. I keep my oven at 100 degrees, 140 if I wanted like super set quickly. Great, so now are we adding the eyes? Yeah, we're adding the eyes. I just made a little hole because we're gonna make small eyes. And there we go. Now, before we move on here, tell me about where we are today. Right now, we're at SGWS Wynwood, which is an amazing space where you can host like a little demo show like this, or you can also have a, a wine tasting, um, a friendly gathering, right. and a party. Yeah, it's a beautiful event space that we're oh, yeah. in so far, and we're able to have some fun uh, for spooky season. So let's move on. Uh, what do we have next? Okay, so next we're gonna have our poison apples, okay. which essentially there's no poison. No poison? It's just candy, <laughs> just colored black to go with the theme. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a tray with parchment paper and a little bit of spray just so that it doesn't stick. And then another thing is you wanna make sure your apples are super clean. Sure. In our sugar mix, we have our plain sugar, a little bit of corn syrup, and then our black dye. And that makes this? Yes, if you wanna go ahead and hand that. Now, this kinda looks like poison. Yeah. I don't know if you wanna take a look in there. So you're just gonna grab a metal spoon. Remember, plastic will melt. And then just let it drip. It kinda gives it that yeah. snow white poison apple look. Yeah, it gives it that, that ooze. Yeah. And then the next way we can do this is- Just straight dip it in there. Yeah, just <laughs> go for it. So that's a great way to be able to control the amount of either sugar you want to take in or how much you like for the taste. It's wonderful. All right, well, stay close because we have one more recipe. And if you're vegan, you'll definitely want to stick around because we have a vegan recipe for you coming for you right next, correct? Yes. What is it? It's going to be vegan pumpkin cheesecake. Vegan pumpkin cheesecake. Come right back. When SoFlo Health returns, tricks, ah, that's a scary treats, and how to properly push up with Morgan. Focusing on you. From your team of experts at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, South Florida's only National Cancer Institute designated cancer center. Are you or your children at increased risk for breast cancer and other related cancers? It's important to find out because steps can be taken to prevent or detect it early. Rachel Silva Smith is a genetic counselor at Sylvester. Hi, Rachel. Tell us what is genetic testing and who's it for? Hi, so genetic testing is the process of examining the genes that you were born with, and that's typically done through a blood sample or a saliva sample to see if you've inherited any genetic predisposition to cancer. Genetic testing can be indicated in many different scenarios. One that's really important is any woman who's diagnosed with breast cancer at age 45 or under. And if a woman is diagnosed at age 60 or under, they typically have to have triple negative breast cancer. Any woman who is Ashkenazi Jewish and has breast cancer also qualifies for genetic testing. Any male with breast cancer also qualifies for genetic testing. And if you see three cases of breast cancer on the same side of the family. And why is it important that this be done at Sylvester? We have a team of genetic specialists who would follow you in terms of increasing your screening and possibly any preventative surgeries you may need. So it's really comprehensive care at Sylvester. It's creepier and creepier in here. We're at No Way Out Haunt at the Curtis Mansion in Miami Springs. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and we've been walking through this haunted house, showing you what they're doing to protect you from COVID. And when we last left you, we were showing you some sweet treats that you can make at home that are a little bit on the healthier side. Is there something on my face? Oh, oh God. As promised, we are back with Najee, and we are going to make a, well, she made already for you, and she's gonna show you how to make a pumpkin cheesecake that's vegan. So it's not really a cheesecake, but it's the same vibe. Yeah. Okay. And it still has the same texture. So, you know. Perfect. For those of you that have either dietary restrictions or choose just to eat vegan. Yeah. This is for you. So what do we have in here? For our cheesecake, you want to start with the base and we have our graham cracker mix right here. It's just graham cracker, a little bit of salt, a teaspoon of cinnamon and um, our dairy free butter. And then we're going to go ahead and stick this in the oven at 350 for about six minutes or until golden brown. Great. 
So we're gonna work on our cheesecake mix, which I already have here. And it's basically just um, our cashews that we soaked in water overnight. And we drain the liquid and blend the cashews with our pumpkin puree, um, our pumpkin spice mix, which is cinnamon, cloves, and ginger. We're gonna blend it with coconut oil, sugar, a little bit of flax seeds with water, which is gonna act as our eggs. And then a little bit of our sweetener would be maple syrup. And then we have a dash of almond milk. Wow. All right, and then it just goes in the blender. Great. And then we have these little guys that I already baked at 300 degrees for 10 minutes. Okay. To make it more Halloween, we're gonna add little faces. This is where you get to have fun with it, customize it, but knowing that your sweet treat is also a little healthier than the average. Exactly. And then I'm just gonna make a little jack-o'-lantern. And then there you have it. You have your little mummies. Yeah. I'm gonna remove my mask here and enjoy. Oh, wow. That is amazing. Thank you. And what's crazy is, it has the consistency of cheesecake. Looks like cheesecake, tastes like cheesecake, with that pumpkin spice flavor. My poor mummy fell apart here. Thank you so much for having us and showing us your sweet treats and tricks here. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, try it out at home. I'm gonna finish this. Ugh, just so, so scary in here. Fortunately, when it comes to COVID, they've got hand sanitizing stations, you're socially distanced, you book an appointment time so that there's not a large crowd. They even have plexiglass barriers so that you can get scared and safely. Here on SoFlow Health, we have showed you all sorts of exercises from beginner basics to the experts. And Morgan is our expert that has showed you how to do those movements. Now, Morgan, I think it's time we take it back to basics and really show people how to do something as simple as a push-up. We're six feet apart, we're here to park, we can take our masks off, so we're going to do so for now. Yes. All right, Morgan, so I will be the test dummy, and you tell everybody what needs to be done. Okay, so first things first, we are gonna start with the setup. So I want you to get into a high plank position for me. Your hands are gonna be flat on the ground, you are on your toes. First thing I wanna talk about is his neck. We wanna be sure that the neck is in line with your spine, just like that, perfect. Now we are moving down to the shoulders. So now oftentimes people will hear, squeeze your shoulders together. So what they think that means is bringing their shoulders up to their ears. That's not what that means. We want the shoulders down, and then we want to squeeze the shoulder blades. So we want to think the shoulder blades are coming together and down. Perfect. Now, continuing to make our way down, we approach the core. Brace the core. The lower back is flat. We are continuing that flat line. The glutes are tight, which is just going to reinforce tightness throughout your whole body. Because once we begin that pushing motion, you want your body to move as one single unit. So now making our way down, the legs are straight, and then here we approach the feet. Hunter's feet are apart right now. That's fine. That's going to give you a little bit more stability. You're able to balance a little bit better. But if you're more advanced, you can bring the feet together, still maintaining that flat line. So this is a perfect setup. Looking great, Hunter. Are you ready for the execution? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just holding that position alone does a lot of work. I already feel that holding the right position engages all the muscles that you will be using during the push-up. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the high plank is basically a push-up without the push. Absolutely, and that is once we get into progressions, that's the first one, the beginner one. So once you master that, you're ready to move on. So finding your position, he is picking feet apart. That is perfectly fine. He's looking good, he's looking flat. So now, with control, you're going to lower yourself down and coming right back up. So give me a few reps of that, and I want you guys to be mindful. Look at Hunter's elbows. Where a lot of people go wrong is they bring the elbows outward. Can you show me that one? Yeah, do not do this. Do not do that. That is going to set your shoulders up in a bad position, leading to a lot of shoulder injuries. And like we had said, the push-up is one of the most common exercises, which means you're probably gonna be doing these for years and years and years and years. So why set yourself up in a position where you're wearing and tearing that every single time? We rather have form, uh -oh. better quality. Yep. Yep. Over quality. Get there, get there, get there, get there. Hey. Yeah, it's, uh, it kind of rained on us out here, but uh, what else were you about to tell us just before the rain hit us? Is there anything else that people need to know about modifying a push-up? Yeah, Hunter, you know, it happens. South Florida, it is raining, but we basically covered it. We did the setup, we did the execution. 
As for modifications, I would say the most important thing to be mindful of is dropping the ego. It is about quality over quantity. Like I had mentioned, the push-up is a great exercise. It's something you want to do your whole entire life. So this is not the time to get next to your gym buddy and see who can do more reps and let that competition factor come into play. Focus on good form, preventing injury, dropping the ego, and working to progress in a safe manner. All right, Morgan, well, we'll find some time and figure this out and we'll get some more advanced movements in next week. But for now, we just got to stay dry. Yes. Thank you guys so much for having me. It is always a pleasure. And all of you guys at home get to work on the push up. Aussie of No Way Out Hot shows us what they're doing to keep you safe from COVID-19. And Mindy of Hair Industry Salon does the same after the break. Better not be anything scary in here. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. We're at No Way Out Haunt, and it's scary in here. But the only thing scarier than being at a haunted house this year is COVID-19. And if you're nervous about heading out, we don't blame you. But don't worry, we're about to talk to Ozzy to show you what they're doing here to take care of your health while they scare you. So Ozzy's right over there, here we go. Hey there, Ozzy. Hey, how you doing, Hunter? I'm good. It looks great in here. Well, it looks gloomy in here, Thank but you. that's great for you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so tell us, where are we? What are we doing? What are we looking at? We are at the Curtis Mansion in Miami Springs. Mm -hmm. uh, no Way Out Haunted House. We're doing a nightmare theme this year, sleep paralysis related. What should people expect? A lot of scares, a lot of screams, a lot of fun. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. And uh, when it comes to doing anything these days, you have to talk about COVID. We're here with our masks on, we're socially distant. So tell me about COVID and how it's affecting you. It was really challenging to move forward with this event. So the main scares, jump scares, what we like to call, they're behind a plexiglass. Those are the actors that get close to you, but there's a divider. All the other actors, for example, this one, you're behind the tub. Right. And the guest goes through that path right there. Right. So it's a six feet distance. All guests must wear masks. All actors are wearing masks. Either Whether it's a part of their costume or not. They're Correct. So the mask, the actors are wearing the regular mask. We decorate it. So we put teeth on it. You know, they, we, it. we decorate the mask so it looks part right. of the theme. The other thing we're doing, we have sanitizing stations throughout the hunt. In the entrance, midway, and at the end. And I think uh, one of the biggest things that you didn't mention is uh, the way you uh, get a ticket and your time to get here. Talk about yes, that. Yes, absolutely. So in order to avoid the crowds, I would say, to avoid sure. the crowds, we're doing time ticketing. Okay, so that way we don't have a large crowd here and we have a fast flow. All right, outside of the COVID thing, what do you want people to know and experience when they get here? I want them to have fun. The main thing is for you guys to have fun, to get scared, um, to laugh, to have an experience. Definitely bring your mask, mandatory to come inside the haunt, be on time and have fun. Scream and have fun. Enjoy the time. All right, well, Ozzy, thank you so much for taking the time to let us know about the COVID and of course, just the overall fun that you can have here at No Way Out. I'm gonna keep on heading through Absolutely. here. Absolutely. I guess so you can leave your post now. Have fun. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> the coronavirus pandemic has been difficult on everyone, especially local businesses and extra especially salons. That's why we're here to visit Hair Industry Salon to learn what they've been doing to not only stay in business for the last 18 years, but stay in business during a COVID-19 pandemic. Let's head inside and meet Kim and Mindy. Hi, Kim. Hi, Hunter. How are you? I'm good. You take your temperature. Let's do it. Yay. I did it. A little sanitation here. Okay. And this is the protocol that everyone yes. goes through here? Yes, absolutely. I want people to know that we are doing everything above and beyond that we know that we can do to make their experience here at Hair Industry safe. Our clients are our family and we love them and we trust them and they trust us. So you're really making sure that uh, before people even arrive, that everything's taken care of so that as soon as they're ready to go, they can have their appointment uninterrupted, but also so that it's safe and clean. Yes. All right, well, I think I see Nini back there. You mind if I yes. go talk to her? She's ready for you. All right, let's go. Go ahead. Mindy, as we've walked into your beautiful salon here, uh, tell me what's changed for you throughout COVID-19? Since we reopened on May 18th, we've had to make a lot of 
changes and tweaking of the salon to make clients feel more comfortable and safe. We put very high quality glass partitions in between every station. We have hand sanitizer and disinfectant at every station. All clients and stylists must wear masks, so our first priority was making sure our clients felt comfortable. And what should someone know before coming here? They should know that they must have an appointment and that we are taking every precaution possible to keep them and our staff safe. And if somebody wants to visit or just learn more about you, where can they do that? Our website is hairindustrysalon.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Hair Industry Salon, Instagram at Hair Industry Salon. Great. Well, Mindy, thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Hunter. Giving us the world tour. Thank you. Uh, and we really appreciate that you've been doing this not only for 18 years, but during the toughest time, you're taking care of all of us. Thank you. Thank you. It was great to be here. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and I'm so sorry if you're just joining us right now because we had a great time at No Way Out on the Curtis Mansion in Miami Springs. They have hand sanitizing stations like this one right here throughout the entire facility. There's all the rules and the ways that they're taking care of you during COVID-19. And just extra cool is that this is actually a haunted mansion. Well, it's a haunted house right now for October, but year round, it's one of the haunted historical sites in our area, which is pretty cool if you're into that getting scared kind of thing year round. And that's all we have for today's episode of SoFlow Health. I hope you enjoyed. And if you're looking to go out to a haunted house, that you come to one like this that is taking good care of your health while scaring you and you can have a good time. And we hope that you heed the advice that the CDC has that we gave you earlier on in the show to take care of your health in Halloween, whether you're going out and trick-or-treating or whatever it is that you can do. I'm not really sure what's going to happen. We'll find out together, but most importantly, let's stay safe. And as always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowHealth.com. You can follow us using at SoFlow Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. Until next time, goodbye, good health, and have a happy, safe Halloween. Next week on SoFlow Health, we head to North Miami for an impressive installation at the Museum of Contemporary Art. Plus, a wheatgrass facial you can make at home, and Morgan shows us variations of the push-up without the rain. We'll see you then.